Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the new iPad. No, really, it's the new, new iPad. This is the late 2012 model, otherwise known as the Retina iPad, which was what we called the last one, too. So it's getting pretty confusing here, but again, late 2012 came out in October of 2012. A lot faster, still the same Retina display, still the same casing, gets the new Lightning connector, and we're going to look at it now. So here it is, the fourth generation iPad. This is the full-size model, 9.7 inches as ever. And fourth generation means you have the Apple A6X CPU inside, so clocked at 1.4 GHz, which for an Apple CPU is actually a pretty high clock speed. Fast running chips, they are, as a gig of RAM, just like the third generation model, also referred to as the new iPad or the iPad with Retina display. So that gets to be a little bit confusing as to what people are talking about here. Uh, and honestly, they are pretty much the same other than the faster CPU inside and the new lightning connector that we have at the bottom. You see this little connector right here. Teeny little guy just like on the iPhone 5. Uh, a little bit of a pain in the you-know-where right now because there are not accessories out there that are available for this connector, but hopefully in the next couple of months we'll start to see those appear. Uh, Apple requires certification for anybody who uses the new connector because there's a little chip inside, a little smart chip, so it's not so easy as just building a cable. But anyway, for those of you who do have peripherals that, that depend on the 30-pin connector, you're either going to have to get the adapter, and that works for anything that's analog, that's charging and analog audio, and that's it. But for some things, uh, like speaker stands, that kind of thing, it may not fit in there anymore once you add that little dock connector. It takes up a little bit of space there. But going forward, it will be a good thing, no doubt. And here we have the third generation iPad with Retina display on top, and you can see the bigger 30-pin connector versus the 8-pin connector. Now, in a couple of months, once we start seeing new accessories and peripherals that use the lightning connector, it probably will be a good thing. It's a, it's a faster connector, it does USB data transfer quicker, takes up less space, obviously, and also for those of you who have an iPhone 5, it means you're not going to have to carry around two different cables. And, as you can see, otherwise, these guys are identical looking. It's just the same thing, iPad 3, iPad 4. Casing is the same, weight is the same. Thickness is the same, 0.37 inches. They weigh about 1.44 pounds for the Wi-Fi only model. You get about 10 grams heavier if you go up to the Wi-Fi plus 3G slash 4G model. It's available with your choice of either a black bezel or a white bezel. That hasn't changed. The usual single Apple control button down here. Camera up here. This has been upgraded a little bit. We're now looking at 1.2 megapixel, megapixel. FaceTime HD camera up from VGA on the third generation iPad. The rear camera unchanged. You still have your little 5 megapixel camera up here. And the controls are exactly the same and in the same location. Cases will work for one versus the other. So if you have a Retina iPad case, third gen, and you just decide to upgrade to the fourth gen, because also Apple is offering an um, extended return period for those who just bought, say, an iPad 3 and you're feeling a little bummed because this guy came out, you can keep the same case. Headphone jack right there. Up top, our power button. Volume controls, and then this control over here can either be your mute button or your rotation lock, depending on how you set that up in software. And the bottom, as we saw, there's just your lightning connector and nothing else. And also on the bottom, we have the same mono speaker. Right now, the mini iPad mini is the only one that has moved up to stereo. Pricing is also unchanged from the last generation. Starts at $499 for the 16 gig Wi-Fi only model. You can also get in 32 and 64 gig increments. Each increment adds $100. And there is a 3G slash 4G with an LTE option. And in the US, that's available with Verizon, AT&T, and Sprint service, depending on which you want. The Retina display is also unchanged, 2048 by 1536 pixels. As ever, a gorgeous display, really nice, rich, vibrant colors, plenty of contrast, and certainly one of the nicest displays you're going to find on any kind of device, period. Speed, just fine. Not that any iPad really lags, to tell you the truth, but certainly this is going to be the fastest ever, and on synthetic benchmarks, it really does better than everything else. It's a little bit better than the iPhone 5, which has the new Apple A6 CPU, this being the A6X. So you've got a multi-core CPU in here with dedicated graphics. And for those benchmark numbers, Geekbench has scored a 1766, which is a little bit faster than the iPhone 5, very good, and more than twice as fast as the previous generation Retina iPad, which scored a 757 for us. 
which is also about the same as the iPad 2 scored. Now, why is that? Since the, the iPad 3 was significantly faster in terms of horsepower inside, that's because the iPad 3 was pushing on a whole lot of pixels here, having a retina display. It's a lot more work. And for comparison, for those of you who are considering the iPad mini as well, that scored 752, so you're looking at about the same benchmark score as the iPad 2 and the iPad 3, but uh, the brain power in terms of the CPU that's used inside is pretty much similar to the iPad 2 for the iPad mini. And Sun Spider, this scored 913, where lower numbers are better. We scored 922 on the iPhone 5. Two of those are the highest numbers that we've seen on a mobile device yet. Significantly better than the 1581 we saw on the original iPad Retina model, or the third generation. And on the iPad Mini, we scored 1541. So again, you're seeing an improvement here, but again, all of these are really actually quite fast at browsing. Browser mark score. 201,792, an all-time high for a mobile OS tablet or smartphone. GL Benchmark, the Egypt off-screen test, is the, is the most interesting one because it's not bound to display resolution, and that scored 219 frames per second. That's compared to 139 frames per second on the iPad 3 and 90 for the iPad mini. And here you can see your, our Sun Spider results for yourself. Well, with a little pinch zooming action for speed, now that this is the most complex page, and now we've got our browser mark score right there. And here's our Geekbench 2 result. And here are the subscore graphs for those of you who are interested in such things. You can see integer score at 1334, floating point 2246, memory score 2065, and stream performance 1006. The tablet has Bluetooth 4.0. It supports HID devices like Bluetooth keyboards. That's, again, nothing new for an iPad. Dual band Wi-Fi A, B, G, N. No GPS. It does Wi-Fi triangulation for location. If you get the Wi-Fi only model, if you get the ones that have cellular inside, you do get a GPS. And still no NFC, but then again, there's really not a whole lot going on with NFC yet. Camera interface is always very minimal for Apple. Nothing has changed there. You can tap to focus, pick the point you want to focus on, make sure that Ernie's old face is focused. Takes pictures quickly. You can switch to video by sliding. You can switch where your cameras. Also notice that the video is more zoomed in than the camera. And then we can start recording. Choose our focus point at any point if we're having problems and get it to meter differently. And the rear camera is again 5 megapixels. It has a 2.4 aperture, which is a pretty wide aperture, fast lens. Face detection, backside illuminated sensor, autofocus, obviously. So reasonably capable as a tablet camera goes. Not the absolute best on the market, but not too bad either. About equivalent to your iPhone 4. The tablet runs iOS 6.0. At first, cable plug-in, we got it updated to 6.01. And you have all your standard apps here, including the now much lauded Apple Maps. Yes, I'm being a little sarcastic there, but you know, it depends on where you are here in the Dallas area. It actually does a pretty good job of not getting us lost or showing us wrong information, and our landmarks are not too squashed. The YouTube player is gone with iOS 6. That's the same thing you're going to face if you update your older iPad to iOS 6, but you can use the web browser and go to mobile YouTube and get a pretty good HTML5 presentation as to whether YouTube is going to come out with an application for the iPad as they did for the iPhone? I really don't know. Tablet has a 42.5 watt per hour battery that's sealed inside. And one thing that's nice is this actually has a little bit better battery life than the iPad 3, the first Retina iPad, about an hour more in our tests. Now, the iPad 3 wasn't the longest lasting. It was trying to do a whole lot of processing, obviously, just to keep that Retina display running nice, nicely and smoothly. So. We're glad to see going over 10 hours of battery life on this guy with mixed use. And for those of you who are considering the iPad mini as well, you can see the size difference right here. We have them pretty much lined up right here on this side. So obviously the iPad mini is more portable. It's still a pretty good sized tablet at nearly 8 inches for those of you who don't want to feel too cramped either. What do you lose out with? On the Mini, you don't get the Retina display. Then again, it, it is a smaller display, so you have reasonably good pixel density compared to the old iPad 2. But for those of you who have become, shall I say, Retina eyes, you use Retina Max, you've been using a Retina iPad, you might still prefer to stick with your Retina bigger tablet. Though I will say that the amazing portability of the iPad Mini is, is a pretty good selling point, and I find that I don't mind giving up Retina so much. 
just because it's so thin, so light, so easy to carry. It's also 329 starting point versus 499 starting point. Not that browsing speed has ever been an issue with the Retina iPad, the third generation. Clearly, smooth and fast scrolling here. Instantaneous pinch zooming, beautiful smooth text as well. And we have HTML5 video support too. So I'll try out this video from the Times page and test it out. We'll go out full screen. Really nice and sharp, smooth, no problem there. Very sharp. And the speaker is the same as on the iPad 3, which is a reasonable volume, still mono sound. Not too harsh though. And once again, video playback has not been a problem on the iPad with Retina Display either, third gens, but we're going to test out a 1080p MPEG-4 high-profile trailer here. You can hear the speaker. Plays back just fine. And for those of you who are looking to output to your HDMI-equipped device, like your HDTV Apple, is ready a lightning to HDMI adapter. And now for gaming, we're gonna test out Modern Combat 3 Game Loft game. Pretty demanding, really nice graphics. Of course, we expect it's gonna do really well. By the way, this one gets hot on the back just like the last iPad with Retina display. You do feel it getting pretty warm when you're playing games. Not gonna burn you or anything like that, but you do notice it's a hand warmer. Good sign when the game loads before the blah blah is finished. It's looking good. Let's move into some action. She's up. There's Modern Combat 3 playing beautifully. Really, obviously this can handle any game you throw at it. It's got more processing power than any game is going to demand of it. And we tested a whole lot of other games you can see on our screen right here, and they all ran just perfectly. We're not going to bore you with playing every single one of these games. Really, the only thing that would really put this CPU to, to serious use would be HD video editing. Now, I'm not sure how many of you actually use your iPad to edit HD video in a serious way, but uh, if you have iMovie, you'll notice an improvement if you're doing an HD video edit. Say you have a five minute clip that you want to export, you probably are going to shave off about 45 seconds according to our tests on that. And if you're using something like Pinnacle, you may actually save even more time with it. But it takes something that demanding right now to put this, this CPU to work. So that's Apple's fourth generation iPad. Again, it's available now starting at $499. And uh, certainly it's Apple's best iPad yet, despite the fact that it just followed the iPad 3 by only a couple of months. Faster, better battery life, new connector. So for those of you who are looking to get your first iPad or you are looking to upgrade from an iPad 1 or 2, well, certainly it's a no-brainer. If you like your iPad, you're going to love this one. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website for the full review. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel.